Sponsored by the Elder Scrolls Online, Morrowind. Return to the iconic island of Vardenfell in the Elder Scrolls Online, Morrowind. What if the Nazis had been victorious? What if they had superior technology, weapons and access to the occult? What if they conquered Europe and forced the United States to surrender? In the world of Wolfenstein, all these things came to pass, and the people of Earth now kneel at the feet of the Nazi Empire. But how did it all go so wrong? Let's take a look back at the story of Wolfenstein. It all begins during World War II, and with William Joseph Blazkowicz. During the war, Blazkowicz was dispatched to investigate the Third Reich's paranormal division, and their experiments with the occult. As the war raged on, Blazkowicz would stop many Nazi plots, ranging from things like resurrecting a medieval German king, to building a superweapon powered by energy from an alternate dimension. However, the mastermind behind many of these plots survived each encounter, and continued in his evil ways. Wilhelm Death's Head Strauss is a ruthless, unethical and sadistic man, who loves to watch his enemies suffer and thoroughly enjoys experimenting on the human body. Oh, I like the eyes on this one. Don't you forget about them. I like yours too. Death's Head's goal is to arm the Nazi war machine with advanced technology and devastating weapons, and he'll do whatever it takes to make his warped dream become a reality. The weapons he gave to the Nazis provided the power to crush the other European nations. So, in an attempt to put a stop to them, Blazkowicz was dispatched, along with his fellow agent Wesley, to infiltrate Castle Wolfenstein and obtain documents detailing Death's Head's location. However, during the mission they were captured and tortured for information. Wesley was the first to die. Strapped into an electric chair, he was savagely beaten, but held out until a final jolt of electricity ripped through his body. Then it was Blazkowicz's turn in the hot seat. Stabbed and shocked, he refused to give in, and then during what should have been the final killing blow, he broke free and got his revenge. After escaping, Blazkowicz found the Nazis opening an underground vault that let loose a poisonous gas, turning everyone who died in the vicinity into burning zombies known as Shamblers. Blazkowicz fought his way through the zombified Nazis and finally managed to catch up with Helga, the leader of the group. She had ventured into the vault itself and encountered the source of the gas, a gigantic undead monstrosity which even she could not control. Blazkowicz killed the monster but not before it could fatally wound Helga, allowing him to collect the documents from her broken corpse. Finally, the Allied forces were ready to embark on the mission that would put an end to Death's Head and his evil plans once and for all. I feel the weight of the world pushing me down. I try to carry it nonetheless. One last time. Then I can rest. The Allied forces conducted a massive air raid against Death's Head's fortress, and Blazkowicz, along with his friends Fergus and Wyatt, are part of it. However, during the fight, the three of them were captured and brought to a room containing some horrific sights. A laboratory purpose-built for experimenting on human bodies, where corpses are pulled open and dissected by Death's Head himself. Bodies lay on medical slabs, stretched open, their insides extracted. The sadistic man behind it all gave Blazkowicz a choice. Help me make a choice. In your opinion, which one of these two varieties would best support my research? You're forced to make a decision or watch both of them die, but the cruelty of Death's Head was beyond imaginable. Death's Head left the survivors to die in the lab's emergency incinerator, and although they escaped, Blazkowicz suffered a critical head wound, putting him into a coma for 14 years. By the time he woke back up, it was 1960, and the Nazis had won. 
it was revealed that the overwhelming power had come from reverse engineering technology from an ancient organisation, giving them access to things like energy weapons and complex computer AI. In an attempt to stop the Nazis gaining even more power, Laskovitz stole a piece of this ancient technology for himself and used it to gain access to nuclear launch codes. With the codes and the ancient tech, Blazkowicz and the other resistance fighters launched a desperate assault on Death's Head's compound, and the two men once again came face to face. I think today we meet for the last time. It's revealed that the brain taken from your friend all those years ago was still in Death's Head's possession. The madman placed it inside a robot and the machine came to life and assaulted Blazkowicz. The mind inside, unable to restrain the programming. Blazkowicz eventually defeated it and put his old friend to rest, before the final showdown. When Blazkowicz managed to get the upper hand and drag Death's head out of the machine, the old man had just one last card to play. Death's head was dead, but Blazkowicz was also gravely wounded. However, he still found the strength to drag himself away towards the window to make sure the resistance escaped before giving his final command. Blasco, do you read? Am I clear to fire? You're clear. That brings you up to date with everything you need to know to be ready for Wolfenstein the New Colossus, where you can now fight the Nazis who have taken control of the United States. As always, this is James Fakers saying thanks for watching and enjoy the game. I ain't no goddamn Nazi. Return to the iconic island of Vardenfell in the Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind. Now, it is your time to save Morrowind.